everyone to the second virtual uh, I House Salon Sunday. Uh, today we have some wonderful musicians lined up, uh, some recordings, some live performances uh, from uh, all sorts of places, from Canada to Mexico uh, and wider. Uh, so without further ado, because we're all uh, so eager to hear them, uh, let us start. I'm going to see if Bogdan has joined us. He hasn't joined us. Um, Bogdan Dulu will be our first performer. Uh, he did let me know that he wasn't feeling very well today, uh, so he might not be able to join us, which is probably what happened. Um, I don't know much to say about uh, the pieces that he is uh, performing, but what I do know is that they are a result of a collaboration with uh, Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Uh, and that's quite exciting uh, for Bogdan, who, as you may all know, is from Romania and is living in Vancouver right now. Um, uh, this was a collabor collaboration uh, uh, with a little ensemble during the pandemic. You can see them all wearing masks. You can see the trumpet player standing behind a, a glass barrier. Um, and what they performed was uh, various pieces uh, from suites and uh, operas by Henry Purcell. And so this will be uh, a kind of Purcell medley for you with Bogdan playing the harpsichord. You may have remembered Bogdan as a virtuoso pianist uh, with a very you know, strong and heavy sound. Uh, but of course, in a harpsichord, that's a completely different story. So without further ado, uh, I will share a screen with you and we'll hear Bogdan perform with Vancouver uh, Symphony Orchestra a Purcell medley.
let's give Bogdan and the Vancouver Symphony a round of applause. You can unmute yourself for a second if you want. So we can hear it. Awesome. Beautiful. Nothing like a, a beautiful Baroque ensemble to start a Sunday. Um, okay, so uh, our next performer uh, will be Avner Feinberg. Avner, could you tell us a little bit about your piece and what we're going to hear? Oh, sure. Um, so this piece um, is called Sirens and it's for uh, violin and electronics. And um, it's actually part of a larger piece called uh, The Four Seasons of Isolation for Violin Live Electronics, which is sort of what I call a concerto for one. So it has uh, four movements, about 35 minutes, and so far I've written about two and a half movements, and this is uh, the first one, which is the only one I kind of uh, recorded so far. Uh, so the, you'll hear sine waves on the speakers, which are the most, if you don't know what sine waves, waves are, uh, they're the most basic, or if you want the most pure type of electronic sound there is, they're just like the basic frequency. Um, now the performer, which is a violinist, and it's going to be me, I'm playing the violin, um, controls the um, slide, you kind of slide from one note to the other with a foot pedal. So um, it, the electronics are happening live uh, while I'm playing the piece. Um, and um, as it progresses, it becomes more complex. Uh, the idea it is actually supposed to sound like a little bit like um, ambulance sirens, not the sirens of uh, Greek mythology. So I recorded this piece uh, in February, which was the uh, I think the peak of the pandemic here at the Westmoreland Church in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, which is just down the street. Okay, Abner, thank you so much. That sounds like a very, very personal project and very, very meaningfully um, related to what we were all going through. So uh, let's hear Abner's sirens.
right. Thank you so much, Avner. Let's give a round of applause. Round of applause. All right, thank you so much, Aaron. That was such a beautiful and eerie piece. Um, is everybody hearing the music well? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear it? The sound is good. Great. And I know something was up with my voice too. Uh, is that better now? <clears throat> the feedback? I think that's good. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, and we have some nice comments from Sarah. Very intense. Uh, my ears were ringing. Yes, the electronics were really, really impressive. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Uh, we are going to um, uh, move on to Emily's piece because we made a slight change in our program because Emily will have to leave later. Uh, so, Emily, if you would like to tell us a little bit about Solstice, your composition. Hi, everyone. Good morning here in California this morning. Um, so I lived in I House for three years from 2010 to 2013, and I founded uh, a choir there, which was really fun. And I loved it a lot, but I did eventually have to leave I House, as we all do. And eventually I even left New York, but thankfully the choir actually continued on for about five years, even after I left um, the city under Rebecca Barnett, who's another I House alum. And so this piece is constructed entirely from a recording less than a minute long of um, about, yeah, I guess a verse and a chorus from a Macedonian folk song that the choir was singing the year, um, about a year after I'd left. So it was very poignant to me to go back and visit and, and still sing with everyone and see that they were even doing new repertoire. And I also just really liked the song. It's called Stomi e Milo. Um, and then that year I entered a master's program in composition and had to create my first electronic piece. And I was really uh, kind of like scared by it. <laughs> Still am. It's not really my thing. I'm more an acoustic composer. So I wanted to take these these voices and just manipulate them and see what would come out of it. And um, I normally compose very intuitively, and this was the same same thing. So I couldn't tell you exactly how it came about, but eventually, through manipulating surely these acoustic sounds. Um, kind of ironically, a more natural um, and like spiritual even um, vibe and narrative started to come out of it, despite all these electronic manipulations that I was learning. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's still my pretty much my only electronic piece. I, I feel like I don't even want to try to uh, make anything nearly as meaningful to me as something constructed out of uh, material from this really special choir from a special time, I'm sure, in all of our lives when we lived at iHouse. So that's the story of Solstice. Thank you, Emily. And I wouldn't say that, uh, that it's spiritual in spite of the electronics, but I would, I would almost say exactly because of it, it, it creates a wonderful, wonderful effect. And you will all hear it in just a moment. I would like to first share with you a little photo of uh, the I House Choir. Can you see them all? That's our I House Choir doing their rounds. I think they actually did perform in the subway a couple of times, uh, and uh, uh, but of course, uh, mostly in I House. And now uh, I will try to show you both a uh, eerie and beautiful picture of a uh, campfire at night and also uh, play Emily's Peace. Try to do that. I guess I'll have to stop share the screen and I'll have to play the, uh, the music for you. Just a moment. There we go. Um,
All right. Wow. Oh, lovely. That was beautiful and eerie. And, and to me, it, it really uh, sounds uh, like, um, like a memory, you know, like, like, a, like a photo fades, you know, and becomes, has, starts to have a kind of uh, veneer over it. Uh, and that's kind of what that sounds to me, like our memories of I House, uh, still there somewhere, but coming through a distant uh, filter or something. I really, really enjoyed that. So thank you, Emily. Thanks, Gabor. Okay. All right. And now uh, we are going to move on to our next uh, composer. As you've seen, uh, there's a lot of creativity uh, going on, uh, a lot of new music being composed. Uh, and, and I would like to uh, ask Mike Boyman to introduce his uh, new piece that was also created during this pandemic. Thanks, Gabor. And I have to say, it's so nice to be a part of this and to see old friends and hear recent work, what they've been up to. Um, Emily's piece made me very nostalgic <laughs> for singing in the choir, which you can't really do these days. Um, so just a little bit about the piece. Um, it's, uh, it's not usually how I work. I, I like to write music for a specific occasion for a performance coming up uh, and for a lot of musicians artists in general um, last year uh, everything just exploded any any kind of calendar we had just you know went up in smoke and so i was really left with nothing but time on my hands and i decided just to write i mean it's it's a creative outlet for me it's it can be very therapeutic and i i just wanted to write a piece that reflected my experience during the pandemic uh and it was a mix i mean it was a tough time it still is um but at the same time my wife and i had uh had our son teddy he's about a year old so he's a pandemic baby we've been you know raising him in that environment which the silver lining is we've gotten to spend a lot of time with him so i try to write a piece that takes into account the 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 joyful times and the challenging times and the the title that I came up with, Seeking Solace, I had, I had a hard time with it, um, but I, I think it accurately describes what the piece is trying to do. It also has some alliteration, which doesn't hurt. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you to Yavor for, for taking this on. Um, when I wrote it, uh, it's, it's brand new. Um, I had nothing lined up for a performance of it. Uh, and he very generously agreed to learn it and uh, perform it for you now uh, this is this is the premiere um and uh I, I can't wait to hear it thank you awesome mike thank you so much and i must say it was really uh fun uh when when i asked mike if he would like to show some of his music um it was really uh, uh you know it was very um uh how should i say uh scary um to 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 be asked by him then immediately to play his piece because that's quite a responsibility uh, but it was also uh, just a wonderful uh, kind of challenge uh, throughout this pandemic i played a lot of old music you know bach beethoven chopin things that i knew before um, but to discover something completely new that's really really refreshing and i'm sure you will enjoy this piece just as much as i did uh, and and it's beautiful um, uh, lush harmonies. So without further ado, please enjoy Mike Boyman's uh, Seeking Solace.
Thank you so much. And thank you, Mike. Thank, thank you, Yavor. Was... It's uh it's uh yeah, it's just a pleasure to hear you hear you play it and uh again thank you so much for uh for agreeing to take it on. Of course. It's a pleasure for a change to work with a living composer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll try to keep that up for another few decades at least. <laughs> yes. Keep it going, Mike. Keep it going. All right. Thank you everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to move on to our next performer, Sarah Sommer, who you may have known as, a, I believe, a French horn player before. Uh, Sarah uh, now has a, a, a new talent that she wants to share with you. And I'm actually very, very happy and proud of that because I, I, want, um, I want these Salon Nights or Salon Sundays to be uh, not just about uh, specifically music or classical music, uh, but I want this to celebrate all kinds of creativity. So Sarah, if you would like to tell us a little bit about your book and, uh, and read it, read, read from it. Yes, thank you for having me. This, this will be completely different from what you have been listening to. <laughs> uh, my name is Sarah Summer. I'm the author of the book that I'm going to be reading today, which is a children's picture book uh, entitled The Goose on the Roof. As I've published three books so far, and I decided to read my debut one today for you, because I figure this group might appreciate all the leaps of faith that we take um, when we jump into a new endeavor or a new country or simply iHouse. <laughs> uh, so you, yes, you may remember me from my house as being a clarinetist, but I have shifted in the last 10 years since leaving the house to a more corporate environment. So I have been writing to try and express my creativity in a different way uh, other than performing. So that's where this came from. Uh, this specific book features two of my favorite things, animals, which are central to all of my stories. They're usually the main characters. <laughs> and it also features a lyrical writing, writing style, which is reflective of that extensive musical background that I have. It features a theme of problem solving. So if you do have some little ones running around, I, they're welcome to listen, it is age appropriate. Uh, but a potential challenge you could pose to them afterward would be for them to create their own uh, situations and you know what kind of animals would they have invited to the party per se to try and help the goose and see what kind of awkward situations those animals would have gotten into. Uh, as far as inspiration, I was when I was writing this, I was channeling a book that was read to me when I was a child entitled If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, the premise being that once you give that mouse a cookie, he's now thirsty and he wants some milk. And it features that snowballing effect that once you take one action, all these other consequences happen. So you'll notice as you're listening that the story has a bit of a wind up and wind down storyline. Um, I'm proud to share that it did win first place in the Purple Dragonfly Book Awards last year, and it features artwork by a talented Italian illustrator, Martina Terzi. So yes, this was conceived entirely virtually, but before it was cool to do so during a pandemic. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, this is The Goose on the Roof. There's a goose on my roof and he won't go away. He's been honking all night and all through the day. There's a goose on my roof and he won't come down. Won't somebody please help me stop this sound? I'm just so tired of the squawking all the time, but what should I do? The goose isn't mine. There's a knock on the door, the neighbors complaining. Keep it down, please. I have guests I'm entertaining. I'm sorry, I said, and I promised I'd go talk to that goose about his honking show. So I ran outside and found a frog who said he could leap really high to the shingles overhead. But he jumped too far in the wrong direction and now he's trapped in a busy intersection. Then I asked for a hand from a nearby cat who claimed she could chase away the goose like a rat. But the cat soon froze halfway up the tree and now she's too scared to come back down to me. So now I'm stuck with a goose who won't leave, a cat in a tree and a frog in the street. 
Then out of the sky came a blue butterfly who offered to carry me to the roof so high. But I was far too big for the butterfly's wings, and now he's tired, the poor little thing. Meanwhile, the goose on the roof honked again. He clearly wasn't trying to make any friends. It was then at that moment that a dog walked by. She thought she could talk to the goose and ask why. So she barked and she barked and it just got loud because the noise never stopped and there were two of them now. Through all of this wild and crazy commotion, a flea volunteered with a fanciful notion. But as soon as the flea began to jump all around, he got lost and confused and landed upside down. The sun was about to set and I was starting to worry. Would anyone be able to help me in a hurry? Because I still need to get up onto the roof and go find the flea and call the dog's whoops and then rescue the cat who was getting upset and go help a frog who I barely just met. As I looked around at the scene, I sighed and saw the neighbor was watching unsatisfied. It was then I noticed my dad had appeared with a tall silver ladder and not an ounce of fear. He placed the ladder and locked it tight, offered his hand and said it would be all right. When we got to the top, I could finally see what was causing the goose to honk and plea. The goose's foot was stuck. Oh my, the bird was unable to leave or fly. So I gently kneeled down and spoke quietly as I loosened the ring that was wrapped tightly. Suddenly he took off soaring into the sky and let out an echoey freedom cry. I figured it was his way to say thanks for the goose on the roof was finally safe. After climbing on down, we used that same ladder to get the cat down before the cat got madder. Then we walked to the street to stop all the cars so the frog could hop home to his log under the stars. As we passed by the dog, my dad offered a treat and she was busy chewing her way down the street. When the dog walked by, the flea picked up her scent and followed her home and pitched a tent. <laughs> we found a place for the butterfly to rest and sent flowers to apologize to the neighbor and his guests. It's now so quiet, I almost miss the goose, but I'm happy that he's no longer on my roof. I am glad everyone is safe once again, and I even managed to make a few friends. If the goose on the roof ever does return, I'll know what to do, for now I have learned. The end. Woohoo! Oh, so sweet, Sam. That was so sweet, <laughs> incredibly adorable. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope you have a lot of success with your book. I think there's lots of uh, uh, little ones in the iHouse community who would love to, to uh, have this book. So if anybody uh, wants to write in the chat an info about themselves, their website, or their, you know, what, what they've been up to, please feel free. Uh, leave a link, Sarah, for us where we can find this book. Uh, and I think that would be a great way to, to uh, connect all of us and what we're doing and, and to uh, make sure that we can access each other's work. So thank you again. That was great. Uh, let's move on. Uh, our next performer will be uh, Paulina Simkin, who you may also know from her uh, piano years at iHouse. She has gone through quite a transformation in her creativity too. So uh, let's hear from Paulina about what she will uh, do for us today. Hi, Paulina. Hi guys, thanks for having me. This is such a nice reunion. Um, and Sarah, beautiful, beautiful book. Um, 
and all the other performers actually. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> that was really cool. Um, I've lived in I House from um, 2209 to 212, and I had like some of my best New York times there. And I started at I House um, while I was there. I was a pianist, and then I finished at I House um, as an actress because I switched basically. But then the pandemic actually helped me kind of find my my roots again. And um, and it's um, piano saved me kind of because I've been teaching online a lot and giving some virtual performances and it reconnected me back to my love with the piano. So I do both now. And um, uh, those three songs that I've prepared, I love kind of DJing a little bit uh, with the songs that I play and the pieces that I choose with a classical or jazz dance like today. Um, I love to line them where, you know, like harmonically speaking, they match um, like the ending of one piece with the be beginning of the next one. And um, so I would love to ask you not to clap between the pieces and have those smoothly transition into each other. And then at the last one, I'll dare something that I haven't ever actually publicly. I'll um, include my voice too. <laughs> Forgive me for that already. <laughs> That's something um, that I, I made you do. I, I, I suggested that you also sing and, and here, here you are. Exploring. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really funny because y'all were asked, um, oh, are you playing or are you singing too? I'm like, uh, and a couple of people have been encouraging me to start singing as well because I've done uh, voice like back in college, but um, yeah, you guys will be my guinea pigs. Thank you already. <laughs> It'll be like a mixture of song and spoken word because after all, I am an actress. All right, so. Would you tell us what you were going to sing for us or and play for us? Oh, sorry, I didn't even mention because yeah, like it's the program pieces. So we have La Vie on Rose by Edith Piaf first and then Moon River by um, Henry Mancini. And then the song will be Glenn Miller's Moonlight Serenade. Right.
like you were having so much fun <laughs> Paulina, that was wonderful thank you thank, thank you, you. So for sharing your talents with us your new talents uh, who knew uh, uh, what else is hiding inside of you uh, so I'm really glad that we we uh, you know this was a great um, excuse for you to try all these new things out thank thanks you. for your encouragement <laughs> that was great that was great this is what we stand for at iHouse new creative talents Okay, and our final performance today will be Vlada Vasilieva and uh, Anatoly Zatin from their duo Petrov. So please, Vlada, if you would tell us a little bit about your duo and about uh, the piece that you will be, uh, uh, that we will show uh, from you. With pleasure, and thank you very much for having me back and now the two of us. And uh, maybe some of you recall uh, with whom we shared the time at I house uh, that uh, sometime my husband Anatoly would would visit uh, New York and uh, we would be asking uh, for the uh, practice rooms with two pianos because already back then we were uh, performing quite a lot as a duo, uh, mainly in two pianos. And uh, now it's been slightly over 17 years of performing together as Duo Petrov. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Petrov means, it's a Czech uh, brand of pianos, which we like and admire very much. And um, uh, today you're going to uh, listen uh, one of our maybe most representative pieces, uh, because uh, Something that uh, characterizes our duo is that uh, we make our own repertoire. We play, of course, uh, all, all sorts of uh, composers, but we have a composer, which is Anatoly, and uh, he made this uh, exquisite arrangement for uh, two pianos of a traditional of a folk Mexican dance. Uh, the name is El Jarabe Tapatio. And this music uh, originally is performed by a special kind of ensemble uh, called mariachi, maybe you know it. 
It's uh, usually comprised of uh, violinists, guitars and trumpets. And of course, uh, the dancers uh, dressed with uh, beautiful, colorful, uh, long dresses. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, very colorful dance. So uh, this is Anatoly's uh, very virtuosic arrangement for two pianos. And this piece, actually, we uh, premiered it in New York in 2010. Uh, only months after uh, I finished my uh, studies and my I house uh, time, and it's very nice to to bring it back now. And I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you, Thank you Vlada. And and uh, as you say, very virtuosic. I think that's an understatement. Uh, you think of, <laughs> when you hear uh, when you think of mariachi. Uh, this is not. Um, this is going to be way more uh, virtuosic and and uh, brilliant and explosive than you expect. So please enjoy uh, Vlada's and Anatoly's arrangement. Here we go.
All right. <laughs> what a fireworks. Oh. What a fireworks. Wow. That was quite something, unlike anything I've heard before. <laughs> thank you, Vlada, and yeah, for the, the art of it. arrangement is not an easy one, I must tell no. you. Doesn't look easy at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, my husband, Anatoly, he, uh, he studied at the uh, St. Petersburg Conservatory. He's a member of the St. Petersburg Union of Composers. So, yeah, it's, it's an art in itself. So thank you very much for having yep. us. Yes, yes, certainly arranging music, especially in this kind of way, takes a lot of knowledge of the instrument and of music and, and, and experience. And I think we've all today, uh, uh, starting with Bogdan, who you know, uh, played harpsichord uh, and ending with you two, arranging a, a song, all of us today have somehow rethought and re, uh, reinvented ourselves and, and found some new aspect of ourselves that that uh, we wanted to bring to light and that just makes me so happy to be part of this community and to be part of this uh, this i house alumni group i hope we'll expand uh, our the salon nights even though uh, as as you know uh, here in new york at least we are uh, slightly getting back to normal but the restrictions are being uh, uh, taken taken down and i hope that we are all now at the beginning of a beautiful new renaissance of live music. Uh, but uh, that I think it's also very special what we managed to accomplish with these uh, remote concerts. And maybe in the future, there'll be some sort of hybrid. I think that that might be a great idea to go forward. We'll see. Thank you all for, for being here. Please uh, unmute yourselves all once more for a final round of applause. And, and anything you'd like to add. Thank you.